Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to go over some of the more advanced drawing features of VRTist. Um, so here we are once again at the uh, the plain white canvas. And I'm just going to grab this and bring it in a little bit once again. That's grabbing with the uh, grab trigger and then down on the joystick and left to make it a little smaller. And to rotate once again, I just press the uh, A button here and then it frees up the rotation. Um, just to note, you only need to press the A button to toggle it. You don't need to hold it down. You do need to hold the grab trigger down. All right, so get a nice, uh, nice place where I can draw pretty easily. And, and then I'll come back over here and I'll grab the pencil and then again down on the joystick to bring it in and left to make it a little bit smaller and more manageable size. And let's just draw something just to see that it still works. Oops, that's a pretty lousy drawing. Um, you know over here, if I press this uh, bottom button, I think that's the uh, X button on the left-hand controller, it undoes it. So it's really handy. So draw something that we didn't want again. Just press undo, and it gets rid of it. So let's draw something that we do want. Let's draw, oops. smiley face there there we go so that's the uh, basics of drawing once again with the uh, undo button thrown in there you can also undo by going over here to your left and clicking on the undo button on the setting shelf so there you go it does the same thing one thing to note about undo is that it affects a lot of things but not everything um, so you might want to keep that in mind and try it out on some test projects before you rely on it for anything really important. So we can obviously undo drawing. We can also undo moving things. So I just move this over here, click the undo button, and it goes back to where it was. Um, this also affects pretty much everything that you can move at the moment. This might change in future versions, but that's something to be aware of. It doesn't affect color changes, however. So if I press undo now, and it gets rid of something that I drew. Um, there's no way to redo, so be careful. Um, you know, if we want to put that uh, line back, now we got to draw our own line all over again. You'll notice I just um, picked the color right out of the canvas. You do that by pointing at the canvas and pressing the uh, B button. And whatever you're hovering, you'll see the color over here changes. You'll pick the color right off of the canvas. Um, one thing to note is that it picks the average color based on the brush shape. So if we make this big color, we get this kind of whitish gray. If we make this really small and make sure it's right in the black line, we get the this nice black. You can do that from average in color. So we get this gray. Um, it can come in handy in a lot of places. So let's go back to the black. And we'll draw our smiley face all over again. If you want to be sure that you've got pure black, you can come all the way over here to your color wheel. And you've got on the quick palette down here, you've got the default colors of black and white. So we can pick black and make sure we've got it definitely pure black. Again, erasing by pressing the A button on the right-hand controller, and now we can draw the line. And there it is. One thing to note about this quick palette is you can add your own color. So now let's say we want to start coloring in the smiley face. We'll go down here to uh, make a new layer underneath so it keeps our line. And we'll pick this yellowish color because smiley faces are usually yellow. And since we'll probably need this color again, we can click this plus button to add the color to the palette. Now we come over here and start drawing. Just like that. Now let's say we come over here and add a highlight, or shadow rather, it might be a little easier. Lower the opacity, we add a shadow over here like this. 
But now, let's, now if we want this original yellow color, we've got two options. We can try and sample from the canvas, or if that's going to be difficult, we come over here and click on it. And now it goes back to our original yellow color. And we can touch this up. And lower the opacity. Do -do -do -do. All right, and now we've got a nice shadow. Obviously, we can make this better by spending more time and effort on it, but I think it gets the point across. Let's see, so this is the quick palette. It's really handy. It only stores the uh, the color, it doesn't store the opacity. So when you click on it, you just pay attention because your opacity goes back all the way up to full opacity. This is really handy if you need pure white or pure black, because trying to mess with the slider can be a little tricky. If you get close to the end here, it jumps to the it jumps to the top or the bottom. So that's useful, but the quick colors can be really handy for just jumping to that. And let's see. So if we come over here a little bit further, we have our brushes again. And remember the brush selection. I'll go into detail on some, some more of them. Um, one really useful brush right here is this fill brush. So let's say, oops, let's come back over here. And there's some graphical artifacts. We can worry about those later. If we come down to here, um, you see it draws this X across the whole canvas. And that's because it's going to fill it in. Let's pick this blue color. And it just fills the whole canvas. That's really nifty. If we come up to this layer, this other fill brush, um, we'll just fill in what's already there. So if we pick this green color. Now our smiley is green. We can um, undo this, obviously. Um, and it's good to note that the opacity affects this, these brushes too. So if we just come and do a little bit, you can see it goes based on how much we press it can be pretty handy. And let's see, some other features are if we come over here to the brush shelf, um, we've got this these wrapping options. This is really handy if you're trying to draw some kind of tiled texture. These are toggle buttons, so if you click them, they um, turn on. If you click them again, they turn off. Right now, we don't have a highlight color for it, uh, but I'm sure that will come someday. Let's just add a new layer here so we can um, work with it, move it underneath. Let's pick a red color. So you, so we start drawing. That's great. Now you'll notice as we get to the edge, it wraps around and you get the draw all the way on the other side. Um, obviously wrapping X does the horizontal direction and Y does the uh, vertical direction. And if you go to the corner, it does all of it. And that's really handy if you need to draw textures that will tile easily. You can use these features. And we can turn them back off. Let's see, what else do we have over here? You can toggle brush rotation. So if, it, if you want your brush just to stay in the same direction, it uh, now it doesn't move. Let's put up the opacity. Now it doesn't move as we move our hand around. This can be handy for different effects. And let's see, it affects the uh, the pencil tool as well. So we just get this one direction. And if you want to turn it back on, you come over here. And now we've got the directions again. One thing you'll notice is that uh, on here on the back of the pencil, you have the currently uh, selected brush. And you can see as we rotate the pencil, it changes the direction. and and see if you push it in while it's in this direction. Hey, look at that, it matches. And if you turn it, then it uh, matches again. So this is pretty nifty. If you want to see how it's going to come out, you can look at the uh, at the pencil over here. Um, let's see, this is more useful for drawing on 3D models, but it just, no, it doesn't do anything right now. Um, you can toggle the rotation lock from the button. See, it's locked again. And now it's unlocked. This is useful if you don't have a uh, controller with buttons on it. If you just have something like a Google Daydream or 
something that you can really only point that will let you unlock the rotation. And same thing for increasing and decreasing brush sizes. Um, so that's, um, these are all just different kinds of brushes. Um, you can experiment with them and see which ones you like the best. You can get lots of different effects. Um, one thing to note about these brushes is that some of them, like this, uh, the default smooth brush, are connected. So if you draw really fast, it draws a straight line. But some of them, like this other one, this other circular brush, are not connected. So if you draw really fast, you can see there's gaps between them. Um, these have different effects, so you can try it out and use the ones that uh, you like the best for whatever you're trying to draw. And so that's the brushes. If you come over here a little bit farther, we've gone over some of the pencils. Um, there's also these really interesting pencil shapes. Um, they're kind of fun to play with. You can see that they put um, the brush everywhere that there's this the pencil tip. So you can um, you can get some interesting effects by playing around with this. Uh, same thing with this grid of pencils. You can draw just like that. And you can get some cool effects by doing different brushes and different opacity levels and things like that. Um, there's also this hammer tool, which is very uh, experimental. But if you tap on the picture, it starts to draw it. And the harder you tap, the more that it goes. This is kind of fun, but it's kind of hard to make useful at the moment. But it's there if you want to play with it. So those are the tools, the uh, erasers we've been over in the previous tutorial. Um, the next thing to know about advanced drawing is this 3D shading option. So if you click it, you can see that now our canvas responds to lights and you know, there's no shadows in, in here, but it responds to lights. And now if we come over here to our layers, and we add a new layer, we can add all of these 3D material modes. Um, so if we add, for instance, a metal mist map, the layer will map the uh, um, grayscale intensity of this layer into the metalness for this material. So let's just fill it with black to start with. So no metalness, you come over here, it's not metal. And let's go with white here. Let's get a big brush. And just for fun, let's use this guy. And look at that. Now it's really shiny where, wherever we've painted. And you can do that, uh, let's just duplicate this. Do that for metalness. Let's add roughness. Oh, now it's really rough where we've uh, where we've drawn. We can uh, set some of this back to black, so it'll be smooth. There you go. And now you got some kind of nice funky metal material going on there. That's, uh, those are most of the drawing options. Some other things that are useful are if you come over here, you can change the project name. The default is just Be Artiste Project. Let's call this Tutorial. And 
And now if we save the project, the composition, we'll get a file called tutorial.vartist. And if we save that, you'll need to down you'll need to take off your headset to actually get the file, but um, it should either download it automatically through your browser or open a pop-up link asking if you want to save it. Um, once you save it, to load it again, you just uh, go to your file browser and drag and drop the uh, VRTist file um, back onto this browser window. It's a lot easier to do if you take off your headset to do it. Um, you can also export the canvas as a PNG. Um, if you have these material uh, layers, they'll export separately, and that way you can plug it into your favorite uh, 3D rendering application. You can export it as a GLB file, that's a 3D model file, ready for you to um, upload into your uh, favorite uh, game engine or 3D renderer. We can toggle the 3D shading back off and it goes back to flat. Some other useful drawing options are the stabilization. So by default, we are at this medium stabilization option where it kind of smooths out uh, some of the controller movement a little bit. We can turn it off entirely and now it's very responsive to what you do. Um, or we can turn on maximum stabilization where um, it kind of slowly responds to what you do, averages your movement uh, quite a bit. This can be useful for trying to draw um, really straight lines or something. Um, or if you have really unsteady hands and you just want uh, a nice steady, steady movement. Um, of course, turning it all off is helpful too if you want it to be really responsive to what you're doing. And you can go crazy like that. If you're having um, difficulty uh, with the performance of the artiste in your browser on your PC, you can change the uh, quality options. It defaults to full quality where the uh, canvas gets rendered at the full resolution, so the full pixel resolution. Um, but if this is causing problems, you can turn it down to medium quality. You can see it, uh, it lowers the resolution of the canvas or low quality, which lowers it even further. So as you draw, you'll see a little bit of a lower resolution image, which sometimes helps speed things up, um, but it'll still draw and save into full resolution. So you can draw things um, and then come back over here, switch to full quality, and it comes comes right back to full quality. So if you're having trouble with performance or, or it's really choppy or, or, or lagging, then um, you can try those options. All the way at the bottom here, you can change the um, resolution of the uh, canvas. So you can change it to whatever, whatever image size you want. Um, let's say we want 1024 by 2048, you can either um, create a new composition with that size, or you can resample the uh, current. So if you resample it, it resizes all of the layers um, to your new size, just like that. And if you do a new one, it erases everything and starts you fresh. So you got rid of all the shelves over here. Um, yeah, and that's about it for uh, advanced drawing with the artiste.